Inventing Day, part one. All right, friends, what we're doing today is getting this soaker hose in there. Not quite sure how we're going to do it. We're going to try and go in between the rows to make sure every part of the soil that needs to get saturated will get saturated. And check back in a minute. Sunny and 60. Wear your sunscreen. So this is what we've got going on. Laid out the soaker hose, getting it all hooked up the way we want it. Next step, straw. Editor Jen here with a quick voiceover. Uh, we did not end up using this irrigation system. Um, we should have tested the hoses out before we laid everything out, but found a lot of integrity issues with the hoses themselves. There's Hound Dog laying in the sun there enjoying her life. But the hoses um, didn't end up working out for us. Just um, too many issues with holes. Um, so we ended up going with our standard watering system of just hand watering or sprinkler watering. But you can try things with gardening and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's not a failure either way. Hey guys, editor Jen here from the future with my trusty glass of editing wine. And I just wanted to hop in here real quick and let you know that the footage you're about to see is um, footage from an Instagram story I did yesterday, which would have been Friday, April 24th, updating folks on um, the progress of some of my seed starts and also kind of outlining the things that I am planting now. Um, so we did end up planting some of our veggies this weekend. We're kind of staggering the planting based on what kind of crops we're putting in. So cold weather crops went in um, today, which is Saturday. And by the time you're seeing this, it's going to be a couple more days in the future. Hopefully you're seeing this on Sunday. Um, my plan is to post this Sunday the 26th, um, but most of the action in this video happened Saturday the 25th, but the footage you're about to see is um, or was filmed on Friday the 24th. Clear as mud, I know. Anyway, it's just an update on the seeds and some of the plants that we're going to be planting and then I'm going to show you the finished product, the, the garden as it stood on Saturday the 25th after planting. So, and then you'll see me again at the end of the video, we'll go over some uh, next steps and other, other goodies. So I thought I would update you a little bit on my seed starts for my veggie garden, just to kind of show you where they're at. I don't see anything in the beans. I'm not sure these beans are going to sprout. It doesn't look like it. They've been in there since uh, April 8th and uh, nothing. But I did sow some lettuce after my germination test was successful. So this is romaine lettuce in this little um, this little egg carton tray I have going on here. And then this will be butter crunch. I did notice the butter crunch sprouted. It was just late. It came up after the romaine did, not as fast. And then up front here, um, I have, these are radish sprouts that I didn't really have the heart to throw away from the germination test. Um, I do direct sow radishes um, into the soil out in my garden, so this isn't necessarily something that you need to do. Um, radish sprouts are also really great on sandwiches and salads, so I mean, I have three of them here. We'll see. I might plant them. We'll see how they do. They're doing okay for now. Um, then here... I have some additional um, romaine lettuce from the germination test that is also butter crunch. Um, those seeds are sprouted in there, they're just, they haven't popped up yet. And then I have my kale, which is doing phenomenal, phenomenally. And then I have my chard, which is a little bit leggy. 
Um, I think this might just be the way chard comes up, though. So it <laughs> it does fine. It stands up under the light and everything. Um, it's just a little bit floppy right now. Um, and then here is my lone okra that came up. Um, these other ones were sprouted in here, but I don't know. I haven't seen any sign of them yet. So might be hit or miss with the okra as far as um, the seeds and, you know, percentage-wise if we'll get a full crop out of them. But if this one little seedling makes it, I would be fine with that. Just have one okra plant um, and be selective about that. Then moving on up here, uh, I've got some seeds today. Uh, my local garden center is open. Uh, they have pretty strict um, precautions in place, which I was happy to see. Um, they're limiting the number of people who can go in and shop. And then um, also CDC guidelines are being enforced. So they have aisles taped off and everything, and you wear masks when you go in. Um, so did that got some seeds, and then also got some starter plants. These are the cold weather crops um, that take a lot longer than these other, like, direct sow crops to get into, to get to maturity. So we usually get those um, as starter plants. So for the starter plants, um, have some broccoli here, some cauliflower, some kohlrabi, over here. Um, it's the giant kohlrabi. This is a big hit with my family. Um, then we have some Walla Walla onions that we do these as starters. We do the smaller the bunching or the green onions at, from seed, but the bigger onions, if we want to have a good crop of these, it will be, if we get them in now as starter plants, it'll probably be uh, late summer early fall. Yeah, 112 days it takes these guys to mature. Sometimes a little bit longer up here. So we want to, we usually get these as starters. And then these last two, um, we grabbed them because they were there. I'm not necessarily sure I want to plant them quite yet. So I might be maintaining them here for a little bit um, in the relative warmth of my apartment. We'll see how that goes. Um, or I might tent them outside uh, and see what I can do there. But, you know, if the weather forecast looks good, I'm not averse to getting some of these warmer weather crops in. So I got some zucchini here and then also some cucumber. I just don't want to plant them too soon because here in Minnesota, things can still get frosty in even in early May. So <laughs> um, usually our danger of frost ends around mid-May. Um, I don't know. It's a gamble. All right, guys, this is the garden as it stood on Saturday, uh, April 25th. And it looks a little bit messy right now. Um, we got all of the straw down and we have plenty of it. Um, once things start to fill in, it will look a lot better. But as it is, it's going to help a lot with our weed prevention issues. So we put in the butternut squash, we put in the beans, and then we also put in the peas back on that row of trellises. We're waiting on the cukes and the zucchini uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, but things are still designated. Um, we did seed a couple of veggies also. We direct sowed the radishes right there and the spinach. We put in the cauliflower and the broccoli in this row. So that's looking good. Um, we put in basically our cold weather crops and then direct sowed some things too. So our carrots are in that row. We have two rows here of Walla Walla onions. Those will be in the garden for pretty much the entirety of the summer because they take a while. And then this last row here we have kohlrabi planted in. Then I am trying something over here. I'm trying some russet potatoes. I started some seed potatoes, so we'll see what they do. Um, kind of an experiment. But this is the overview right now. Not much to look at. You know, it never is until it fills in. All right, guys, I'm back. Hey, back to the future. 
we finished phase one of our planting schedule today, um, the 25th, which is when I'm filming this, but not when you're seeing it. YouTube. I'm still working out the YouTube timeline. Sometimes it's tricky. So our next step, we're going to be doing kind of maybe a phase, like a planting step 1.5. And we're going to try and plant some additional vegetables next weekend if we can, which is, I think it's the first weekend of May. Um, so we're aiming to plant some of our um, sturdier vining plants. So we have... Um, we're gonna try and get the zucchini in. We're gonna try and get the um, the cucumbers in next weekend if all goes well. Um, we're gonna also keep a close eye on the forecast just to make sure there aren't too many days moving forward that are gonna be hovering in the low 40s, high 30s. That's a scary range for me. Anything over 32, which is freezing, should in theory be all right for the cold weather crops, but I don't like flirting with that kind of danger. It's not really my scene, not my jam. So we try, <laughs> I try and be conservative about that. So I think that next weekend, if everything looks good weather-wise, we will definitely get the zucchini and the cucumbers in. Maybe, uh, maybe take a look at getting the seedlings in. Um, so my, my kale, my chard, my lettuce, and maybe my okra. My okra seedling I'm a little bit hesitant about. I know it, you know, it. it's a warm weather crop. I don't want it to get too cold. Um, so we'll see. Those are my thoughts anyway. But the garden looks great. I'm really happy about the, our decision to put down straw. Um, I think that's really going to impact our weed issue, we had so many weeds last year and it got to a point where it was it was really hard to manage and really hard to stay on top of. And we really wanted to try and eliminate that up front this year or, you know, have a good running head start on them. So hopefully the, the straw will help with that. Um, hopefully it will also help with the splashing, the, the dirt splashing because we do get a lot of rain so um especially with the tomatoes we want to try and avoid you know muddy water on the leaves we really i really don't want leaf spot on the tomatoes this year that's something that is a consistent problem that i've had as a vegetable gardener doing this for a few years now it seems like at some point in the season every year i get leaf spot on the damn tomatoes and I don't know really how to how to help it you know how to help the plants once it gets to a certain point it's out of my control so I know that I've notoriously been bad about um, pruning and so I'm gonna definitely stay on top of the pruning this year with the tomatoes but also with our vines I don't want things to get out of control with the vines I want them going up the trellis I want to make sure that we are you know, that I'm able to harvest in a timely fashion um, to make sure that, you know, the fruit production and the veggie production is at its optimal. So really going to stay on top of the harvesting, going to stay on top of the pruning. But I do think, I really do think that the straw is going to help a lot in terms of keeping the moisture in the soil, in terms of keeping the weed growth um, under control, and also in terms of avoiding that that muddy splashback on the leaves that can be a gateway for a lot of fungal diseases on vegetable plants. So after phase 1.5, if that does happen, you know, if if weather is looking kind of kind of rough, we might postpone um, phase 1.5 and just plant everything else that we are planning. Um, the second weekend of May, which is, I believe, right around Mother's Day. That's usually what our go-to plan is um, for the warm weather crops. So things like peppers, um, bell peppers we're going to do, um, jalapenos we're going to do, um, things like tomatoes obviously are included in that, eggplant certainly is included in that, and okra. Um, that's kind of my time frame 
for, for those types of plants. We did a lot today, which I'm really excited about. I look forward to this every year. It's so fun. I really get a sense of purpose and a sense of meaning out of growing my own food. I find that to just be incredibly self-sustaining for myself, you know? It, it's hard to explain, but I do feel kind of a sense of independence and a, self, a sense of self-reliance. Like, I'm doing something to take care of myself and my family members um, in a way that not a lot of people do today. Um, you know, gardens, veggie gardens specifically, are making a comeback, but it's something that I think anybody could do. Um, container gardening is a super easy thing um, to, to learn and you can start small. That's the most important thing to, to take away from all of this. I am lucky that I have a large plot. I'm lucky that I have a family full of gardeners that have done this countless years. I grew, I grew up doing this. So that said, it is easy to learn how to do this. It is easy to start a vegetable garden and that's kind of an important thing is that you can start small, you can you know tap into resources and figure out which crops would probably grow best in your area and when. Um, you can take a look at your zone, what zone you live in. I happen to live in 4B, that's that's my zone. So I, I you know, I know when my planting season starts and ends um, and I kind of just schedule around that. So it takes a little bit of work, it takes a little bit of research, but it is definitely something that I recommend people look into. If you are interested in growing your own food, your own herbs, that's something that, you know, everybody could do. I really do believe that. Editor Jen has had a little bit of wine tonight, so... I will get off my soapbox, but I just want to say thanks. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a final video. I would like to show you what the garden looks like, you know, in a couple of weeks when it's fully planted. I would love to show you guys what that garden looks like, you know, a month from now when things start to fill out, because that'll be real fun. So I will definitely post those updates on my Instagram. I will put that down right here. So if you want to, you know, take a look or follow me on Instagram, those updates will definitely be there for sure. Um, I will try and see if I can figure out how to make a video out of what's left. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming with me on this gardening journey. I am really happy that I got to share this part of my life um, with you because Gardening, specifically vegetable gardening, is really what got me into, you know, my love of cultivating plants. It really is. That's where it started for me. And for a long, long, long time, I, you know, I had a vegetable garden and I grew vegetables, but I didn't really have house plants. <laughs> um, I maybe had one or two or a handful here and there. Um, and then I just, you know, that, that switch flipped for me where I was like, I could bring that indoors. I could explore houseplants. You know, they're not edible, obviously. You wouldn't want to eat your freaking pepperomias. I don't know. I wouldn't. But, I, you know, you can, you can grow things outdoors. You can grow things indoors. The indoors tend to be a little bit more year-round if you give them the right conditions. You know, out here in Minnesota, we don't have that. We we have a short growing season of, you know, maybe late April to maybe September. So it's not long. It's not a lot of time. Um, but it is rewarding for me. It is worth the energy and the aching muscles and all of that. So thank you so much for for coming with me on this little journey um, and I will show you updates down the road of what we are doing out there what that vegetable garden looks like thank you guys for watching and if you would like to subscribe you can do that down there um, and until next time enjoy your plants enjoy your gardens enjoy whatever green things are in your life <laughs>